Hello, everyone, and welcome. Thank you for joining us today for our mentor AMA. We're getting started in a few minutes. So for those of you who are just joining, please hang tight. We'll get started in just a few moments. But we encourage you to ask questions in the chat. The chat feature should be enabled. So please feel free to drop your uh, questions in there. We'll make sure to answer them as well. We hope for this to be engaging. So again, please feel free to reach out with questions. And we'll get started in just a moment. But thank you all so much for joining us today. So my name is Rachel Espiritu. I'm the Marketing Operations Director at Starburst. I have the pleasure of having my colleagues with me, Nate Mason, who's a Principal Accelerator at Starburst, and also Bridget Johnson, who's our Deputy Director. We also have our Marketing Associate, Alana Evans, here as well. They'll be going through and talking through what a mentor is in just a moment. So thank you all again for joining us. And I guess whenever you're ready, uh, I'll kick it over to you, Nate. All right, hi, hi everyone. Thanks, thanks again uh, for joining us today. Really appreciate you taking the time out of your busy day just to, to learn a little bit about our mentor program. Uh, a little background on me. Uh, so Nate Mason, I run our accelerator programs, uh, namely the flagship program, which is a 12 month white glove service um, accelerator. Uh, in which we help founders and startups uh, build traction, uh, whether that's through uh, commercial partnerships or through fundraising. Um, and we also act as like a network amplifier. Um, and it's, a, it's just a really exciting program. And I'm, I'm so excited that you guys are here. Uh, a little background on me. I uh, am an engineer by trade, uh, was active duty military Air Force for 12 years, consulted for a little bit and got my MBA at, at Berkeley Haas. Um, before joining the team here at Starburst a little, little bit over a year ago. Pass it over to Brigia. Great. Thanks so much, Nate. Um, my name is Brigia Johnson. I am heading up the SCALE program, which is Starburst Early Stage Accelerator centered around pre-seed and seed stage entrepreneurs. Um, I'm coming to uh, Starburst with a background more in uh, on the business development and investment side of the ecosystem. So SCALE is looking at supporting you on landing those uh, first rounds of institutional funding, of course, helping you uh, get connected with those government and corporate partners that are necessary, and also helping with the hires and then leveraging all the great talent we have graduating our universities here. Um, so have been really, really uh, privileged to work with a lot of great founders over the last several cohorts. Uh, we'll be kicking off our fifth cohort here in a little less than a week or in about a week's time. So really excited to engage with more of the mentor network and sort of leverage your expertise to support the group as we go through the next 13 weeks and beyond. Um, so I'll hand it back over to Rachel so we can jump into the discussion today and looking forward to your questions. Wonderful. Thank you, Brigia and Nate. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, Nate, if you want to tell us a little bit more about Starburst, maybe those of us uh, that are joining are probably are familiar with the brand, but just for some context. Yeah, for sure. Uh, hey, Alana. Uh, yep, that's right. Okay, so this slide gives an overview of our value prop uh, in the aerospace and defense sector. So as you can see, we operate accelerators, we also have a consultancy practice, and we have a venture fund. Um, all three of the three of these kind of combine work together um, to to help support our founders to help pr produce products for our our clients and uh, to make more informed decisions about our investments. Um, next slide. As you can see here, we work with startups across the entire aerospace value chain. Um, this is how we segment it. So we have like space mobility, uh, regional mobility, urban mobility enabling tech and, and infrastructure. Um, and I think there's one other that should be updated here, but the uh, one that I wanna call out where a lot of people don't really necessarily think that there's a play, but we recently did an accelerator on biotech. Um, so there's like this healthcare leveraged, uh, uh, healthcare angle that is, is coming into the space sector that I think is really cool. Uh, next slide. Um, and as you can see here, uh, to date, we've analyzed over 15,000 startups uh, since our inception. Um, and uh, we have a, a variety of partners throughout the ecosystem, more than 60, uh, if you look at the government and, cor and corporate landscape. Um, and we've made over 140 investments into startups uh, to date. So 
So that's it for that. Okay, great. Thank you, Nate. So let's yeah jump in. What is the role of a mentor? Yeah, uh, the role of a mentor is to, is to, um, to help our startups, uh, help our portfolio companies um, get over like that valley, valley of death and, and excel, accelerate their, their business. Um, we're looking for mentors that are passionate about aerospace and defense. We're looking for mentors that want to be part of a community um, and not only just you know, leverage your expertise, but also become part of, like I said, this community where everyone is growing together. That's great. And so what types of mentors would you be looking for? Yeah, uh, that's a good question. Uh, the types of mentors that uh, we typically look for are uh, former founders. Uh, we have some investors that are mentors. We have people that have like marketing expertise, sales expertise, um, and sometimes like a deep domain expertise in a particular one of those value chain verticals. Um, so it's it's all across the board. Um, uh, of the type of mentors that we're, we're we're hoping to attract into the program. And can you talk a little bit more about the different programs that mentors can engage with? Yeah, so I'll talk about mine and then I'll hand it off to Brigia to talk about uh, programmatic um, uh, accelerators. But so for the flagship uh, program, um, like I said earlier, it's a 12 month program in which we help founders accelerate their business, whether that's uh, acting as a network amplifier or building commercial partnerships or helping for their next fundraise. And so um, the type of mentors that we look for are, are the same for what, what would be used in a, a programmatic accelerator program that Breezer runs, but the engagement is just slightly different. Um, what happens in the flagship is we uh, pair you up with uh, some of the founders, we give them uh, insights into whatever the mentor's expertise is, and then they build the relationship off of that. So it could be a one-time 30-minute conversation, or it can be a reoccurring uh, engagement that, that goes on with the founder. It, it's, it's all dependent on the relationship that's built between the, the mentor and the founder. And uh, I'll let Bridget talk a little bit more about scale. Yeah, so happy to shed some light on sort of the different ways that scale and other um, accelerators similar are utilizing our mentors. Um, so we do use the subject matter experts in a couple of different ways. Um, so the difference between um, scale and the flagship accelerator is that we are curriculum based. So we have workshops that we hold um, twice a week, uh, sometimes three times if we're including an investor pitch practice. But we hold these sessions twice a week for an hour or two hours that are deep dive discussions into a specific area. So whether we're looking at um, business model formulation or challenging assumptions or viability of a certain model you're deciding to pursue, or if we're going deep into the CIBR process and STTRs, how to apply for government funding, how to write proposals, what is the strategy around that, um, and all the way to, of course, the investor uh, feedback. So how do I develop a pitch deck? What should my story be around that for a particular audience? And um, how do I frame these discussions as I'm going into these meetings? What is due diligence going to look like when you're in that process? So those are some of the areas that we'll cover in our curriculum. And then Separately, we have investor pitch practices that we do uh, biweekly throughout the 13 weeks. So uh, these are sessions where you get one-on-one -on -one interaction with the founders. You're giving them candid, raw feedback for them to iterate in, on and develop their pitch deck to hopefully by the end of this course, they're confidently able to speak clearly about the solution they're bringing. Um, we also host uh, VIP panels and lunches. So if there's a specific trend you're seeing in the industry that you want to share more about um, and sort of get perspective from the founders on how they're thinking about these things, we can set up one-on-one -on -one discussions with our community, uh, our portfolio founders, and sort of congregate around this idea and explore that further. Um, so a couple different ways that we can engage with folks here. Um, as I mentioned, Scale is going to be kicking off their next cohort in the next week. We are still welcoming 
Um, founders who are looking to get their hands dirty and get engaged with folks one-on-one. -on -one. Um, and really where we see a lot of value driven is from this investor feedback. So if you have been a pitch coach in the past or you're connected with an angel network or other investors who might be interested, um, those will be great ways to foray into the community and sort of get yourselves familiar. Yeah, and, and a lot of what Brisha just described is there's crossover with the flagship program. Not not every aspect, but there's a lot of opportunity that uh, Brisha just laid out to also engage with the founders in the flagship program as well. I, I will say the tempo of engagement is probably faster or more or a higher tempo when it comes to the programmatic um, engagements, just because it is designed in like a 13 week um, sprint versus the flagship is over a 12 month period. So depending on your style of engagement, that, that can um, kind of give you some insights into which program you, you, you would you know, like to be engaged with more. That's great. And so you talked about you know, high level, the types of mentors. Can we also talk a little bit more about the topics that uh, mentors can advise on? Yeah, absolutely. Like uh, some of the topics can be uh, helping with some like uh, understanding regulations. Uh, Brigia hit on this earlier, uh, looking at how do you apply for sibbers or sitters. Um, it could also be uh, like sales expertise, marketing expertise, um, pitch deck support, uh, go-to-market strategy, branding, all of those things that you think of when you're launching a company, right? That founders will need help, help with. They're wearing a thousand hats at one time and running in a hundred different directions and just kind of need a little bit of a guidance and assistance here and there. That's great. And so how do mentors engage with startups? Uh, can mentors expect just like, you know, a bunch of emails coming in? Do you guys help, you know, moderate that? What does that look like? Yeah. So the way we, the way we make the connection is by uh, once, once you're accepted into the program, we ask for a headshot and a couple of uh, detailed, like over uh, some bullets on like your expertise, basically as a mentor. And we put that into one of our booklets and that booklet is shared with our with our portfolio companies. And based off of their, you know, they, they go in and based off of the needs that they're looking uh, to, to fill, they'll go through and say, hey, like I would love to have Rachel for her marketing expertise. And so then we would make the connection via email, um, at least for the flagship. Uh, now we are looking for ways to also improve engagement with the founders, right? Say you engage once or, or two times a year and you're looking for more opportunities, we have these in-person events that we're that we're going to be hosting. Like uh, Brigia mentioned earlier, I believe the uh, did you uh, Brigia did you mention the May the Fourth? Okay, so I'm getting ahead of myself. So we have an event coming up. We'll tell you about it, uh, where we want mentors to be part of these in-person engagements uh, that are with founders, with investors, with industry experts. So that way. We get, uh, you know, a, it's a way of saying, you know, number one, we, you can come and maybe drink some beer or have some food with us. And that's our way of, th of, of thanking you. But then also be engaged in this community, this community building where, you know, you're talking to the founders, you're being able to meet other investors and engage with industry experts. And Bridget, please jump in and uh, add to that. Yeah, yeah. I, I would say um, agree with everything that Nate has highlighted there. And for the scale program, I'd say, um, sort of two different ways that we mainly engage with mentors. So either you can lead a workshop or a lecture, you know, once a session and, and maybe do a couple of follow-ups with teams who need uh, more hands-on uh, guidance, or um, you're available as a broader resource for the community and we'll reach out if um, someone needs guidance on their financial model or someone needs help with a cap table or, you know, things that are specific to the area that you've had experience and we can make those one-off connections. And I'll say we've seen um, several times in the past, there's nothing to exclude you from if you're working with a founder and a team that you're really enjoying engaging with. We've had mentors sign on as official advisors for these companies and help them even pass the duration of whatever program they have with Starburst. Um, so would really encourage um, if you're excited about the things that you're seeing, coming out to our events, meeting folks in person, meeting more of the team with Starburst and, and sort of engaging and tracking with founders as we continue to grow. 
That's great. And so what is the time commitment from, you know, mentors? Do you need them to commit to a minimum amount of hours or what does that look like? I can start off from the scale side. So um, I know the commitment that we're asking for from the founders is anywhere from, I would say, 15 to 20 hours of uh, lectures, maybe a couple of homework assignments and, and other things like that. So from the mentor side, I would call it around five hours for the duration of the program. And again, that'll depend on whether you're leading a workshop or a lecture and also um, whether uh, the founders in the cohort need that expertise, like how many of the companies actually need this um, deep dive into this specific area. So it does vary to a certain degree, but I would say somewhere around five hours or so and anything outside of the program scope, if, if you know, you're seeing that you're continuing to get meetings with uh, founders on a certain subject, uh, then, you know, that's up to your discretion post-program. Um, but Nate, yeah, I'll let you sort of expand on that. Yeah, no, thank you. For, for the flagship, there, there's no uh, required amount of time um, for, for the flagship program. Um, and, it, and it's because of, uh, it's really reliant on the founders, right? Like sometimes they need help and other times they don't. And so I didn't want to put a requirement on how many hours mentors have to give when our founders aren't asking for any assistance. So it's, it's really, uh, you know, very easy going. Um, it's all dependent upon the relationship you build with the, with the teams. And it can be as, you know, as low as just a 30 minute conversation, or like Bridget said, signing on as a official advisor later on. We do have a question here in the chat. Do you recommend engineering solutions to your startups? Um, so most of our teams have a deep engineering expertise already. Uh, and part of the reason why they come through the accelerator program is to pair that up with our, our business network and backgrounds. Um, and so I haven't seen any uh, engagements on the engineering side of the house, but that's not to say that that, that need is not, uh, that that won't happen. Um, maybe Bridget, I don't know if you've seen any in uh, through scale or anything like that, but I, I haven't seen that. Yeah, I have it uh, on the scale side. I've seen it come from like advisement from certain professors that maybe have deep expertise and or or thought leader on in an area that they're in. Um, but I would say more so for hiring. So I know yeah, as companies yeah, are yeah. scaling up. Um, they'll need more engineering support just to grow their team and, and expand yeah. these projects that they're signing on to. So um, I would say if, if that's something you have expertise in, still not a deterrent to be a mentor. We'd love to have you in the community. And that way, when we have more opportunities coming available as these companies are growing and signing on more customers, we have a good base to refer them to to uh, you know, sort of utilize uh, the skill set that you bring to the table. Great, thank you. And so, what about uh, you know, is it virtual? Is it in person? What are the options for how mentors can engage? Yeah, yeah. for 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 the flagship, it's it's all uh, virtually, um, unless we're hosting like an event, right? And you're local and. Um, in, in Los Angeles, you're more than welcome to come by in person. We actually encourage that. We, we love to see people in person in, in the office. Um, the, some of the founders are, the, the founding teams are not co-located with us in our office space. But like I said, at an event, we will have teams there, founders there with, you know, investors, mentors, uh, community experts. Yeah, and I would say the same for the same for a scale. Um, we are majority or basically all hosted remotely, virtually, um, but we will have a few events throughout the course of the accelerator that we invite you out to. And even um, if you're having discussions uh, throughout the curriculum and you think that it would just be best to illustrate this idea in person, um, we do allow the founders um, to host meetings in our office space as well. So if outside of an event, you feel it would be best to meet in person or discuss in person with them, that's an option as well. Yeah. We have another question in the chat that talks a little bit more 
you know, saying that obviously altruism is a core component of effective mentorship, but is there the possibility for more comprehensive ways post-program, paid consultancies, cash equity, working part or full-time with the startups? Is that a possibility or what is what does that look like? I would say, yes, that is a possibility, but that's, of course, up to negotiation with the founder, right? So we don't make any claims of, um, uh, we don't do any negotiation there. If if you find a founder that you really love working with and you love the mission that they have, by all means, you know, sign on and discuss um, a further engagement, whether that's part-time, full-time, or you know, checking in on an advisor level and just offering um, network amplification there. Um, but outside of your program commitment um, to, you know, the 13 weeks or the 12 months or whatever it is, it's a no-sell zone within those uh, program timelines. Out, it, whatever your connection you make outside of that is completely up to you and the founder. Okay, we have two more questions. How much does a founder need to invest in the program? Oh, to to so oh, it, I think it's different based on on the program. So for the flagship program, typically what happens is uh, uh, there is a about one hundred and twenty thousand dollars worth of equity investment that Starburst takes, which equals about two percent of ownership, um, to be part of our flagship program, which is a twelve month engagement. And in, in Brescia, for scale, it's it's completely different. I know. Yeah, for scale, there's no equity exchange, no funding provided. So scale is backed by a Department of Commerce grant. Um, so any participation in the program is free. The commitment from the founders um, are at least, as I said, like 20 hours per week. You can expect about that of programming and assignments. Um, and then outside of that, uh, the main commitment is coming in person to the final demo day session that we have. Okay, great. That's helpful. And so the other question, is Starburst the primary matchmaker of company to mentor? So are the mentors available in an internal list that founders can then choose from? Yeah, no, exactly. Like, so the, it's, it's up to the founders. Uh, we provide them with a presentation that has your headshot and your expertise on that on that slide. And they're the ones that make the decision on who they want to connect with. Okay, great. Yeah. And there's a few more questions coming in the chat. So appreciate you guys all dropping them in here. So another question is, can you clarify the 2% equity? How is that linked to Starburst and the mentors? So there's that's not linked to the mentor. So this that was uh, I I believe the question was asked asked about um, how do uh, what do founder founders pay or the startups pay to be part of Starburst? Is that correct, Rachel? Yeah, that was another the, question. Yeah, yeah, I think that was the origin of the original question. So basically, what mm -hmm. what happens is in order to be part of the Starburst flagship accelerator program. Uh, we, we take ownership in those companies to be part of the portfolio, to provide the services we provide. Um, and so that equates to about 2% equity. Great, thank you for clarifying. And another question is, do you have to be in LA to be a founder or be part of the program? So not for the flagship program, it's US based. So you can, you can be anywhere in the, in the US. Um, but for the programmatic one, I think it's, it, it is different. So for scale in particular, it is tied to the Los Angeles region. So, um, we are focusing on businesses that are already in California. However, we do have global participation if you have U.S. on your roadmap. So if you're looking to expand into the U.S., um, and, and open to using LA as an entry point for that market, then you would still qualify for scale. Okay, great. Um, I think that's it from the questions in the chat. So, you know, we talked a little bit about the value of being a mentor, but can you share a little bit more about that? Yeah, I mean, one of the things it just really helps our, our founders really, you know, 
launch their products into the into the market. Um, we look at you know ourselves at Starburst as like a mission oriented um, ecosystem builder where we you know want to we lean into this open innovation mindset where you know the industry is better off if we all work towards you know helping one another. Obviously, there's you know incentives for 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 pay and and, and all of that. But aside from that, right? Um, it, you know, being a mentor, you become part of this this expertise or excuse me this network that has a you know a, a, a deep community um helping build you know like deep tech hard hardware startup solutions that are dual use that you know sometimes have a capability to help national security and um if you have like those type of you know you know ethos if you align to that type of ethos this is like the community that you'd want to be part of that's great and there's another question in the chat here. Do mentors have an opportunity to cross network amongst themselves? Yes, absolutely. Like, so um, most of that happens at uh, an in-person event. So a demo day, a networking event. So obviously there that's, it's, it's allowed. But um, besides that, we don't share uh, contact information within the network just to uh, maintain um, everyone's privacy. Now, if, uh, if, if, if people, you know, if mentors want to be part of a larger uh, cross connected organization where they can communicate with one another, that's something that I'm more than happy to facilitate. I know in the past we've had a Slack channel, um, but that uh, was kind of quiet. Uh, a lot of people didn't engage there. So I'm not sure if it's still, Brigia, I don't know if you guys use it for scale, but for the flagship program, we no longer um, leverage that, uh, that communication channel. So most of the engagement happens in, at the in-person events. Right. Yeah, yeah, I would agree with that. We do still have a Slack channel that's open with all of the mentors and companies that we work with to sort of engage with each other outside of us having to facilitate connections. So would love to get more, <laughs> more engagement there, more input there, more activity. Um, but I would say the, the largest success we've seen is, you know, coming to our in-person events and just engaging with folks there. That's great. And I think we have a video from a mentor in our network. Yes, awesome. If you wanna play that. Hi there, I'm Neil Cohen up here in San Francisco. And I have the privilege of being a mentor for Starburst Aero, not just down in Los Angeles, but with the good folks in Paris and Rotterdam as well. And I'm here to give you three great reasons why you should strongly consider being a mentor for the Starburst program. First and foremost is the quality of the companies. They scour the earth for the best ideas and the best technology, and they bring them in to the accelerator. It's the good housekeeping seal of approval just for aerospace. Second, it's the people. I have loved all the founders that I've had the chance to meet and work with. They're attentive, they're smart, they're eager to learn about what they don't know, and they really have the passion for what they're doing. And they're just so great to work with. And finally, and I think most important is, it is fun. You learn so much, you get to meet amazing people, and you get to have a small part in helping change the world and changing how people go into space. So if you're strongly considering it, give it a good think. And I'm happy to talk to anybody who has the time or inclination that wants to learn more firsthand about what it's like to participate. Good luck. Great, thank you. Well, if that doesn't sell it, I don't know what will. Awesome. Um, so it looks like we have two more questions in the chat. I think we have time for two more if that works for you guys. Yeah. So mm -hmm. do mentors work closely with the scale program to facilitate government grants application process? Yes. So we have had a couple of mentors who have expertise in grant writing or proposal writing. Um, and if you know of, um, well, I know there are founders who have specific ones that they're looking at and preparing for. So I think that would be a great skill set actually to have in our network to utilize when that comes up. 
as long as it doesn't pose a conflict conflict of interest for where you're currently employed, because we want to avoid any of that confusion. Okay, great. And the other question is, can mentors involvement include promoting Starburst outside the U.S.? Absolutely. I would say, uh, you know, hearing accounts and testimonies coming from within, coming from those who are benefiting from the work that we're doing is always welcome. If you are really excited about a company that you've connected with through Starburst, let please share and let people know. And, and also, when we have these open application cycles for these different programs, having you as a champion or referral for others that you're engaging with in your network is extremely valuable and is a good signal for us. Uh, you know, if, if, you know, our mentors are going out and finding really incredible technologies that they think would benefit from uh, what our accelerators can offer, please, please do champion us, please engage um, outside founders and other mentors and investors in your network um, that you think would be a great fit. Awesome. And so any upcoming events, opportunities, how do people get involved? What are next steps? Yeah, I mean, I kind of uh, threw this out a little bit earlier, earlier, but we have an event coming up on May 4th called May the 4th. Um, it's, an, it's an opportunity to come meet uh, the new cohort of scale founders and previous, uh, previous founders there, but we're also going to have, uh, we want mentors to be there and investors and so it's just, it's going to be um, a nice little barbecue, I believe, that we're going to just kind of grill out and, and, and hang out and get to know one another. That's great. And then as far as getting involved, next steps, I mean, it's here on the slide. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Next steps are, are to reach out to me or Breeze or anyone on the screen. Um, and what we typically do is just jump on a quick call, uh, chat with you, understand a little bit more about the skill sets that you that you would bring to the community. Um, and uh, then, you know, if we find that there's an opportunity for you to be part of the, the mentor network, uh, it's pretty easy. We'll send over um, like a screening intake form um, in which you can upload your headshot and some uh, a, sh a short overview of your expertise. Um, and then uh, there's a there's a contract that we sign with each other, uh, basically saying, you know, the information that you receive and the conversations you have with the founders are kept confidential. Um, and, and that's it. And you're into the program. And um, if you want to be part of the scale cohort, like Bridget said, we have a new uh, new scale starting soon. Um, so there, there may be opportunities to plug you in uh, into that particular new co cohort of founders. Um, but also I will update the, the booklet and I'll send it out to all of our uh, flagship uh, program or excuse me, portfolio companies and see if there's any um, opportunities for you there to engage with those founders. Wonderful, thank you so much. And so if there are there any other questions at all that haven't been answered that we can help answer from folks? And again, please feel free to reach out to, to anyone here. We're happy to help and get you connected. Otherwise, if that's it, thank you all for your time today. Nate Mason, Bridget Johnson, thank you both. For joining us today and thank you Alana for your for your support and thank you everyone for participating please feel free to reach out to any of us otherwise have a great rest of your week awesome. thanks everyone thanks Rachel thank thanks everyone thanks.